All right, this is going to be a tutorial in RPG Maker VX Ace for um, just a simple way to do some stealth sections in your game. Um, I'm making this because I wanted to have some kind of simple stealth bits in my game and I couldn't find much help on how to do that. So it took me a long time to figure it out and I'm doing this to hopefully save some other people some time. Um, this is just a really simple way of doing it. If you want to have, if your whole game is going to be based on stealth or something like that, uh, you're probably going to want to get into scripting, which is going to be beyond the scope of this tutorial. Um, this is just to have, you know, like a couple sections where there's some guards walking around and you have to sneak past or something like that. Um, so I'm going to start by just making a quick little map. Um, give it some floor here. And we'll set the start position down here. Um, let me just make a quick wall here. All right. So I'm going to make an event, and this is going to be our guard. And I'll give him uh, this guy here. And this event isn't really going to do anything. This is just going to be basically represent the graphic for the guard and give the other events some stuff to target. Um, and just a quick aside, um, if you're not really all that great with conditional branches and loops, um, you'll probably want to read up on that a bit. I'm not going to go into all the specifics of how they work here. This is going to assume you're already comfortable with that and just show you how to give a guard like some basic line of sight. Um, so anyway, if, you, if you're not following what's going on, um, you probably need to read up on conditional branches and loops and variables. Um, anyway, so that's going to be our guard. And then the way, and there's probably better ways to do this, but the way that I've come up with that works for me is I make two separate events um, and one of them I'm going to call guard move and this is going to control the guards movement um, and that's going to be a parallel process because it's going to be running while everything else is going on and then I make another event called guard site and this is going to control the um, basically is line of sight that determines whether or not the player is going to be spotted. And that will also be a parallel process. Um, so we'll start with, um, let's make this simple. I'm going to start with the simplest case, which um, would be something like this, I guess. Um, oh, my mapping's kind of messed up here. <laughs> um, Sorry. Okay. Let's say I start here and I want the player to basically sneak across and um, get by without the guard seeing him. And I'm just going to start with the simplest where the guard doesn't move or turn or anything. He's just looking down. Um, and this is really simple. You could probably figure this out on your own. But basically, we're not even going to need these two events I made yet. But you'll just make an event that's um, triggered by player touch. So when the player steps on that square, it'll activate whatever you want to happen. And in this case, I'm just going to have the guard say, hey, you can't be over here. Um, so that'll activate when the player steps on it. And so if I wanted um, this to activate when you walk by, I'm just going to copy it, paste, 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 paste. Um, so let's go ahead and play test this. Oh, sorry about the volume. Let me turn that down real quick. Okay. Um, so again, this is a really simple case, but just as soon as I walk onto that square, he's going to see me and activate that event. 
And I could make it, um, obviously in your game, you're not going to want them to just keep going on, or you're going to want something else to happen when you get seen, like a battle triggers, or, you know, you make the player walk back this way since he's been seen, but um, this is just keeping it simple and short. So you step on the square, it triggers, um, and that's it. Whatever happens after that would be up to you, and you'd have to um, make it part of that event. So now let's uh, make it more interesting. I'm going to get rid of these. And let's make it so every, say, three seconds, the guard turns up, um, which would allow you to walk by without being seen. So I need to make it so that when the guard's facing down, I do get seen, but when he's facing up, I don't get seen. Um, so first, let's trigger the turning. Um, so we're going to use our movement event here for the guard. And um, so we'll go set move route on the guard. And we want him to start off facing down for, let's say, three seconds. So first we're just going to wait three seconds, which would be um, 180 frames, because 60 frames is one second. And then he's going to turn up. And actually, I need to do this a different way, sorry. Um, I'm going to make these separate movements, and you'll, you'll see why in a second. So instead of doing it all in one movement, I'm going to do it in separate movements. And again, you'll see why in a second. So after the three seconds, he's going to turn up. And then we'll wait uh, three seconds again. So wait 180 frames and then it'll turn back down. Um, so turn down. And then because this is a parallel process, he'll just keep doing that um, over and over because parallel processes loop until the event's erased or you know a switch turns it off or something. Um, so let's just verify real quick that that's working. So he starts facing down, in a little bit he should turn up, there he goes, then he'll turn back down, okay. And obviously there's nothing, he's not going to see me yet because I haven't put any events in to control the site or trigger anything, but um, just to verify he's turning the way we want him to. And maybe I'll, I'm going to turn his uh, stepping animation on so he doesn't look so still. Okay, so the turning's working correctly. And now we need to, basically we need a way to tell the game whether the guard's facing up or down. Um, and that way we can figure out whether or not the player is seen when he walks by. Um, so the way we're going to do that, you could do it with switches. I like to do it with variables. Um, the variables are a little more flexible. And for some reason for me it's easier to think um, you know, zero is one and one, or zero is off and one is on, rather than thinking about switches being off or on. But um, anyway, you could do it with switches if you want to. I'm going to show you how to do it with variables. So basically, um, he starts facing down, and we're going to make um, two variables. So we go to control variables. And the first one I'm going to call guard up to represent that he's facing up. Or actually, I'll call the first one guard down. And I'll call the second one guard up. So those are my two switches. Um, and I'm going to use, for the value of the variable, I'm going to use 0 to represent that he's not facing that way, and 1 to represent that he is. So I want to start, he starts facing down, so I'm going to start with my guard down one to represent that he is facing down. So right away the game's going to tell, say, hey, set the guard down variable to one, and then we'll be able to do some checks later on. And I think all the variables start with a value of zero, so I don't really need to do this, but just in case I'm going to turn up off. So as soon as the game starts, it's going to tell the game guard facing down is one, which represents on, and guard facing up is zero, which represents off. 
and then it's going to wait 180 frames and he's going to turn up and right before he turns up um, I need to switch the variables so he's turning up so I need to turn guard down off or to zero and I need to turn um, guard up to one to represent that it's on so as soon as he starts turning the variable switch and up is on and down is off and then I can do um, the same thing I'll just copy this right before he turns down and actually um, let's see he starts down then he turns up I don't need this second um, all of this because the event loops so if I get rid of this it starts off he's facing down I tell the game he's facing down we wait three seconds I tell the game he's facing up and he turns up and then we wait three seconds and it loops again um, so that should be all we need for that movement um, so if we loaded the game right now it wouldn't look any different um, but the difference would be those variables are switching on and off. You wouldn't be able to see that in the game because it's kind of behind the scenes. Um, but that's all we've done so far. And now for the site um, to determine whether or not the player is seen, this is where we're going to get into um, some conditional branches. So the first thing we need to do is make a couple other variables. Um, I'm going to call this one player x and that's going to represent the player's x coordinate on the map and this is going to be player y which will represent their y coordinate on the map um, so I was just making those variables I don't want to actually set them to anything but as soon as the game starts um, we're going to set those variables to be the player's x coordinate and the player's y coordinate. And the way you do that is instead of setting it to a constant value, you need to set it to game data and then go inside. And there's a bunch of options here. You want character, player, and we're on the player x variable, so it's going to be the player's map x. So that's right. And we'll hit OK. So what this does is it sets this variable player x set to the player's map x coordinate. And then we'll do the same thing for the y. Um, so we want variable player y and we want to set that to the player's map y. And just a quick um, word about the coordinates. If you're kind of a math person like I am, you're probably used to the x coordinate increases as you go to the right and the y coordinate increases as you go up and that's not the way it is in RPG Maker. Um, the x coordinate does increase as you go to the right so this would be a, an x of 0, an x of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 but the y coordinate increases as you go down so um, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the y. So basically your 0, 0 point is up here and uh, if you went down one that would be 0, 1, 0, 2 and if you ever get confused and need to check which coordinate a square is on if you just click on it um, down here that gives you the coordinate so the x would be 10 and the y would be 9 for that square. Um, anyway, back to our event. So, right as the game starts, um, the player's x and y coordinates are going to be stored in these variables. And since this is a parallel process which loops, um, that's going to be constantly being updated. So as the player walks around, if they move, it's going to put a new value in those variables. And that's what we're going to do to determine if they're seen. So in this case, um, as the player walks by, let, let me adjust this map a little bit to make this uh, simpler. I'm going to put some uh, 
kind of obstacles in the way here. That way, um, I did that so, you know, the player can only be seen when he's below the guard since he can't get up here, just to make it simpler for now. Um, so in this situation, the player is only going to be seen below the guard and only when he's facing down. So we're going to put in a conditional branch, um, and it's only going to trigger when our variable guard down is 1. So basically, when our guard is facing down. And then, um, otherwise it's not going to do anything because the guard will be facing up and you won't see the player. And then, um, but I don't want to trigger it only when the guard's facing down because I might be over here or something and I don't want it to go off just because he's facing down because I might not be where he could see me. Um, so first, let's determine. I would say he'd be able to see you um, if you're somewhere between here and here. So that's an X of 5 down here and an X of 12. So I'm going to go back in here, and if he's facing down, I'm going to do another conditional branch, and if the player's x is greater than or equal to, I think we said, 5, and if the player's x is less than or equal to 12, so basically if he's between 5 and 12, like we said, um, then we'll show our text of, uh, oops, hey, you can't be in here. So let's, um, I'm sure I've missed something, but let's play test it and see what happens. So he starts off facing down, he turns up, he turns down, why is he not turning down? Okay, bug, let's see what's going on here. Um, oh, we're missing a turn down at the beginning, or at the end, sorry. Uh, so guard, turn down. And then when it loops back, it'll turn the down variable on and the up variable off. So that should fix that. Sorry about that. So down, turns up, turns down. Now when he's facing up, we should be able to walk over here without him seeing us. And that's because our down variable is off, so our conditional branch doesn't do its thing. And then when he's facing down, if I step over, I should get the text. All right, so that worked. Um, so that would be just a really uh, simple case where, you know, there's only really one region, this area here or here, um, where the guard can see you. And I could add, um, I probably don't want him to see me if I'm up here next to him because he's looking down. So I could add another um, check. Let me go back. Um, so that would be a Y of 7. Um, and remember the Y goes up as you go down. So I could add another check um, if the player y is, um, has to be greater than 7. Um, just to make it a little more realistic. So let's make sure that works. Um, oops. So when he, when he turns back up, I'll go over, and now I should be able to stand next to him. Uh-oh. 
Um, okay, what's what's wrong here? 